your skin, Big Bandage. Hey guys, what is up? It is my face story here. I want to talk to you guys about something a little bit different, something that I've kind of just realized lately, I guess, and connected the dots on, and that has to do with your emotional well-being and acne. And this is going to be like really real, really personal, but I feel like I want to share it because I think it'll help me to heal, and then I think it'll help other people too who might be going through the same thing. A lot of times when it's acne related, we think, okay, skincare, let me change my skincare, diet, let me change my diet, um, pills, let me ch let me try this uh, antibiotic or let me try Accutane. And sometimes I think the root cause can be emotional stress. And I think sometimes the root cause can be your body's inability to deal with so much stress, um, especially if it's traumatic. And I think for me, what happened, you know, I didn't have any changes in diet, no changes in skincare, nothing like that. And now like that I am thinking back, I did have a lot of stressful things happen in my life right after the other constant for like two years. And I think that my body just honestly kind of gave out. And I think that is what triggered my cystic acne. And I've never really heard people talk about this, but I do think that the human body, you know, is completely connected. Mind, body, soul, it's all connected. You know, like if my digestion's feeling off, I might break out. But I think it's the same way with my mood too. I think it's the same way, you know, if I'm really stressed, I break out. If I'm um, feeling depressed, I might break out. But I think that my acne is really, really closely tied to my emotions. So I guess I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what happened leading up to my breakout and kind of how I've been healing since. There was a couple of different things that happened. And first of all, first of all, my acne started what, like four or five years ago? And around that time, I was in a super bad car accident with a group of friends. And this car accident was, we were, pulled over on the side of the highway basically and this guy hit us going at full speed or above full speed um, totaled the car everyone had a concussion we thought people had were gonna have to get airlifted um, one of my friends actually ended up it triggered a like a, a chiari in her head and she had a brain surgery it was a really bad car accident and that really set the stage I think for my anxiety I couldn't drive on main roads for like a year and like highways I couldn't drive it was like everything was triggering anxiety even like going to the grocery store or anything I don't know if any of you guys have ever suffered with anxiety but it's like you try to get in and out as fast as possible and you don't want anyone looking at you and you don't want to talk to anyone and as soon as I got out you know I'd go and I'd sit in my car and I'd be like oh my god and half the time I'd have a panic attack. So for whatever reason, that car accident for a long time really, really messed me up. And I still, you know, from time to time will start feeling like that again. I have luckily healed a lot and gotten over it a lot. But I think that our bodies, especially like tr physical trauma like that, I think your body kind of holds onto that and holds it in. Um, so really for me, in regards to that, meditating has been super helpful, doing yoga, working out, just to like release that. But yeah, I mean, I had to do physical therapy for a while after I was in that accident, and I feel like for me, like it does hurt, like my back is gonna hurt probably for the rest of my life, but it's more mental and more emotional. Um, I just feel like I never really got closure with the whole situation. And so after that happened, then I got married, which is great. So we got married when we were 18 and he went into the military. So I was back here by myself and that was the whole plan. You know, you get married, he's going to the military. We're going to move around. We're going to leave our hometown. Like that is the whole plan. That is basically what people do <laughs> in the military when they get married. And we were super excited. And then like... A um, couple months in, basically, I got a letter. He got hurt and had to come home. And so, obviously, that's traumatic because your whole life is turned upside down. And how I know that things happen. I know, you know, life isn't perfect. But this was our whole life planned. Just 
and within two weeks just completely changed and so you know we didn't leave we didn't move anywhere we didn't whatever and we had to get a new plan we had to decide you know well I don't think that was ever a decision process for me but at that point you have to decide do you do you really love this person do you want to stay with them <laughs> obviously that's why you're supposed to get married but a lot of people do get married when they go in the military and because they're gonna be gone so since that part of the equation was gone, then that was like really confusing and hard to deal with. And I kind of felt resentment towards my husband for a while. Um, cause I felt like he like ruined our lives or like he ruined this or whatever. And I felt like I put the blame on him for a long time and I felt really disappointed and discouraged because that happened. And really it's not his fault those are my feelings and that's something like I had to work through and I had to talk you know with him about um but yeah after that basically I f it just felt like we had a super rough start like for the first two years a year and a half obviously you get married young unless you're independently wealthy it's super hard financially it's super hard it's pretty much paycheck to paycheck especially when you're in school and working because you're probably working like a minimum wage, like low wage type job. And I sometimes would work two jobs and I would work 60 hours a week. And while I was working 60 hours a week, I was also going to school full time. So I was actually putting in like 100 hours a week. And at that point, you're really stressed the hell out and you're really not taking time to check in on yourself and make sure that you're okay. You're just doing whatever you have to do to get through the day. And I mean, it was like that for a long time, like two, three years. And with him, um, because he doesn't have his degree, it was like every couple months he would either, you know, well, and being young, you just don't want to put up with stupid jobs. So it was like every couple months, it'd be like a new job or he'd quit or he'd, you know, I don't think he ever got fired, but it was just like a constant cycle of like, are we going to have money this month? Are we going to be able to eat this month? And most of the time just eating like, I don't know, Raymond and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I probably did not touch a vegetable for like, unless it was like in a sauce or whatever I probably didn't eat a, like a straight up like oh I want vegetables I want fruit for like two years because all we could uh, really afford to eat was leftovers whatever his parents gave us and just whatever was the cheapest meal to make and that's just the way it is that's how it is when you're young and when you're poor <laughs> um so obviously that, just financial strain for a super long time. And it just felt like with him constantly having new jobs and with me having to work two jobs, then stuff started happening where it was like the car would break and then our dog got sick, got diagnosed with a rare autoimmune disease and then whatever. So then we're taking out all these credit cards and then we're struggling to pay those. And it's just like, <laughs> I'm not to cry. It's just like so much. I don't even know I'm crying. So I guess this is helping me to talk about it then. Um, and then like, it just felt like it was never going to end. Like it felt like no matter what we did, like we there was no catching up. Like there, it wasn't getting any better. And just financially, it was so hard. And we had to move like 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 <laughs> we had to move you know in and out with his parents a couple times which i'm so thankful that they let us stay there and then you know during this time during all this whatever going on my parents got divorced which was super hard and i still haven't really accepted that or i guess i haven't really like got a lot of closure with that because because i Obviously, <laughs> I take sides with one parent. I respect one parent more than the other, and I understand one parent's reasoning more than the other. And just with that whole situation and the way it ended up working out and seeing everything on social media, like, if you're getting divorced, 
just for the sake of your kids, do not post drama on social media. Um, so that was like a whole nother thing. And I think that just all that honestly piled on top of one another and it just like I said it felt like there was no way out it was like giving me like crushing anxiety like giving me crippling anxiety I think that all of that happening just like within such a short amount of time is what like caused my cystic acne is what caused me to get adult onset acne I think I was just so stressed out and I couldn't deal with everything that was happening and by the time you know, I had started to like cope with one loss or cope with one thing. Then by that time, something else had already happened. And like, I get it, stuff happens, it's life, but it just felt like so many traumatic things <laughs> all in a row. And I just, I, I couldn't deal with it. And I think it's not like I had a sheltered life growing up, but I don't think I dealt with that much disappointment appointment and that much hurt and that much anxiety like ever before in my life um and I think it was just too much like it was just too much and I don't know obviously <laughs> uh, I actually felt good talking about it I don't even know if anyone's really even gonna want to watch this but I think that it has been really helpful for me to connect the dots and realize that a big part of my acne is emotion. A big part of my acne is stress and anxiety and guilt and like holding on to these things. And I think once so many things happen to you, once all of these like stressful and traumatic things happen to you, I think it takes your body a long time to get over it. It takes your mind a long time to get over it. Obviously, I'm still emotional about some of the things that happened. But it's just hard, you know. It it was hard. That car the car accident was hard. Luckily I've gotten over a lot of that. Um, getting married young was really hard, not just financially, but it's also hard because people don't really get married young anymore. So, you know, a lot of your friends, a lot of my friends just like didn't want to be friends anymore because all they wanted to do is go out and party. And really people do that a lot just to like meet someone or whatever. And I was kinda over that point in my life. And then there's the other group of married people who are like 30 and have kids. So it's like we're in between. We're like this weird in between where, you know, young people don't want to hang out with us. But then we old people don't want to hang out with us either. So, I don't know. Getting married young was super hard. It's obviously a lot easier now. And I've gotten over a lot of that stuff as well. But I don't know. I think I do still have resentment sometimes. Especially towards older adults because it felt like it felt like no one would take us seriously it felt like no one believed in us and I don't know when you feel like no one takes you seriously for like years then you kind of start to get frustrated and um just fed up with people and when I say no one took us seriously I mean just like one time <laughs> one time I was sick and I couldn't buy cough syrup because I didn't have my ID and I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm married I have tattoos and would not let me buy cough syrup when I was sick so just like little stuff like that that's like really <laughs> um and then again the thing with my parents getting divorced they're married for like 30 something years and even if it wasn't the best relationship or even if it wasn't good like that is what I know and that's like what I saw growing up and I didn't want either of them to really be with anyone else um like I'm happy I guess with the way things worked out for one parent <laughs> I'm trying to let go I'm trying to move on but <laughs> it's hard it's really hard. I didn't know this was going to happen. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to cry. Um, I hope no one thinks I'm like throwing myself a pity party. <laughs> I just know that these are the things that just had me 
so incredibly stressed out and had my body so overwhelmed that I think it just like couldn't keep up anymore. It couldn't keep up with the daily stress. It couldn't keep up like since I had so many things happening, if one little thing, you know, would go wrong, then I'd be like, oh my god, and freak out, you know? So, um, yeah, that is like basically the whole story, the whole spiel. I just think it's really important to talk about you know, the emotional well-being of how you're doing and how you're feeling. Because I don't actually, I mean, you guys have probably know this, noticed this, but I don't share a lot about myself. Like, I'm actually a pretty private person. I talk about my skin like it's nothing. But besides that, I'm pretty private. I don't really talk about my life or anything like that. So, I don't know. I hope that this is just, like, kind of eye-opening to other people because I had... Some other people tell me, you know, oh, they left an abusive relationship and it took them, you know, six years for their skin to finally clear up, but they were so stressed out from that whole experience that that is what triggered theirs. And somebody told me the same thing, like with their parents' divorce, like people have told me so many different things. And I really, really think that it's so important to check on like how you're feeling. Nothing, nothing else really matters <laughs> except for the way you feel, right? So... How I have managed to cope since, basically, basically um, accepting myself that I have acne, that's who I am, and not trying to fix every little thing. What helps me cope a lot with stress and anxiety is working out, like I said, meditating, running, even going for a walk, um, a long walk, but I have to like sweat, I have to burn energy. If I don't, I just have like so much excess just like energy and eh. So for me, working out is like a huge, huge, huge part of just getting my mood right, getting um, my anxiety gone, getting my stress gone. Seriously, it helps so much. And if you're not a big working out person, again, just like walking or meditating, just taking time to check in with yourself. Or some people just take baths. <laughs> just take a bath and relax. But like make sure that you're feeling your emotions and you're not trying to put on a tough exterior, which I feel like is what I did for a really long time. I've been like hardcore Cali. Like I've always had like a tough exterior and I don't want people to know that I have emotions and that I'm feeling stuff, which is like dumb. But I guess that's just the way I am. Talk with someone, if it's a professional or if it's a friend or if it's whatever, just talking with someone, I feel like can help so, 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 so much. Just getting how you're feeling out into the air, writing, talking, but getting it out there so that you know how you're feeling and you can verbalize that and express it to someone and then maybe they're feeling the same way or maybe they can help you. So I think talking is also really important. Time. I think honestly, it just takes time to heal. Again, I think your body kind of clings on to things for a long time. And I think certain traumatic or stressful events can be really hard to get over. And not just, you know, you might think that you're over it, but your body can hold on to memories for a really, really long time. And it can take a long time to get over things. Again, it has been like four or five years and like I still cried about it in this video. So, I am over, you know, most of the stuff that happened, but some stuff still, obviously, like, does affect me. But I think just time, talking about it, and feeling your feelings really is all that you can do. And again, managing, managing your stress, managing your anxiety, make sure you're taking time to check in with yourself and that you're not too overwhelmed. If you are too overwhelmed, getting rid of one or two things that's making you feel that way. I felt for a long time that I was like trapped and there was nothing I could do. Like I had to work all these jobs and I had to go to school and I had to do, it got to the point where even like, like I said, doing two, two things a day would like stress me out just because I got such bad anxiety from that accident. That is my little spiel. And again, like if you need to talk to someone professionally, I think that would help too. I really think that psychologically physically it's all related so be strong hang in there know that acne doesn't last forever and your current state or feeling isn't going to last forever either and that's another thing with acne is that it can cause anxiety and depression so 
it's like a vicious cycle. You know, you get a pimple and then you get anxious and then you get more pimples and then you get depressed and then you get more, you know what I mean? So I think breaking that cycle is really, really important to clearing up your skin too. And I think a lot of people, again, want a quick fix. They want topicals or they want uh, cream or they want like a prescription. But sometimes that doesn't work because your body is still holding on to all these emotions that's making your body feel and react this way. So this is just for anyone, you know, who has been completely lost in their acne isn't caused by diet, skincare, hormones, PCOS, thyroid, liver problems, stomach problems. This could be you. What I went through, what I am still, you know, dealing with some days could be you. So yeah, hopefully this is like eye-opening and can help anyone out there who has gone through, you know, a lot of emotional traumatic stress and just realize that you're not alone and that it will get better. I promise, pinky promise, it just takes time and coping. Whatever you can do to cope or, you know, eventually get better, fix the problem. Yeah, so that is it on emotional well-being for you guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the Acne channel. And that's all I got. Bye, guys.